All right, I'm going to explain what an optimization problem is in this screencast. So let's go through exactly what an optimization problem is. So similar to a targeting problem, an optimization problem has an input cell and an output cell. The output cell is some function of the input cell. So the goal is to maximize or minimize the target, which is f of x. Now, we can do this in Excel using the solver tool. I have an example here. We wish to find the max and min of this function, f of x, in the range 0 to 10. Similar to a targeting problem, we need to come up with some sort of initial estimate or initial guess. So I've got this problem set up in Excel. We're going to need to start with an initial guess. So I'm just going to say 5. And we're going to calculate the minimum and maximum. Now before we do this, it's nice to make a plot of your function. So I've typed in my function here as a function of x. And when I press enter, then that gives me my function value. I can double click here to bring that down. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and go into insert chart. And I'm going to just make a simple line graph. Now we want to find the minimum and maximum in this, in this region. Now the minimum is going to be here at about 2.5. The maximum, depending upon how we do things, could either be here at about 5.5 or it might find the maximum at 0, which is the lower end of our domain. So I typed in my function referencing the x and right now at a value of 5 we are calculating 0.24 and now we want to find the minimum. Now the solver tool just like the goal seek tool needs a initial guess which we've already got so I'm gonna go ahead and go into data solver and I'm going to set objective which is gonna be f of x and we're gonna set that to a minimum by changing variable cell b2 so let's go ahead and do solve and it churns through and finds that there's a minimum at about x equals 2.51 which is the y value of about negative 0.6. I want to show you how we can change the minimum that we find by changing the initial guess. So you see there's another minimum here at about x equals 9. If we guess around 9 then we should get the minimum closest to 9. So I'm going to change my initial guess to 9. We can go back into the solver tool. It cranks through and finds uh, the minimum closest to 9 which is 8.8 with a y value of about negative 0.17. Now let's use a solver tool to find the maximum and I'm going to put in a value of 6 here and we're going to run the solver tool. Instead of calculating the minimum we're going to select max and we click solve. It cranks through and it finds that maximum at about 5.65. Let's do closest to 0. Let's do our solver tool. Click OK and it finds a value of zero. And the reason that it did this is right now in our solver tool, I have this box here selected that says make unconstrained variables non-negative. So if I deselect that, then I can allow for negative values of x. So let's go ahead and rerun it. So now it goes through, and if I would have plotted negative numbers here, there would have been another max at about x equals negative 0.62. Now if we wanted to force a certain domain into our solver box, I can go into solver and this is where we can add in our constraints. So I can click on add. We want to make it such that b2 has to be less than or equal to 10. So I can click add and then my b2 also has to be greater than or equal to 0. And now I can click run and you see now with negative values of x allowed and adding in a constraint that x has to be between 0 and 10, it's finding that the maximum value closest to 0 is about 0.91. Let's go through another somewhat creative example. You have just escaped from prison, so you are right here at this 0, 0 position, and you've got a getaway car waiting for you that's one mile north and one mile east of where you are. You've got a swamp that you have to travel through and you can only go two feet per second through the swamp and you can only go four feet per second through the forest. 
And so obviously, depending upon the angle that you choose to begin with, that's going to govern the time required to get to the getaway car. So if you can go very slowly through the swamp, then maybe you want to make this distance pretty short. But the shorter you make this leg of the trip, then the longer the second leg of the trip is going to be. If you set up an equation for this, you end up with the following, and this is just through simple geometry. The time it takes for you to get to the getaway car is a function of the angle, which is the independent variable. Uh, the angle is expected to be between 30 and 90 degrees. If you guess a theta, then you can plug it into the right-hand side, and that'll give you the time required at that chosen theta that it will take you to get to the getaway car. So I've set up my spreadsheet here. Solver needs an initial guess, so I'm just going to choose something between 30 and 90 degrees, a nice round number of 45. And now I can use this equation here to calculate the time in seconds that it's going to take to get to the getaway car. So I've got my guess of 45 degrees. I've set my equation here. So I've got this in here. I press enter. So if you go at an angle of 45 degrees, it's going to take you 2,800 seconds. Let me quickly convert this to minutes by dividing by 60. We can use the solver tool. Now we're going to set the objective cell B3 to a minimum value by changing cell B2. And when I click solve, it churns through and it determines that if you go at an angle of 65 degrees, that's going to get you to the getaway car the fastest after about 44.4 .4 minutes.